the 19th Future Leaders Conference. Significance of German reunification for Korea. Terra Madre Salon del Gusto 2016. Korean Chinese Festival for Elders. Korean bodybuilders dream big. Hello, welcome to Going Global. I'm your host, Chong Se-mi. It's getting quite cold here in Korea as autumn makes way to winter. But freezing or not, if there really were a kingdom of ice, wouldn't you like to see it for yourself? In the Swedish village of Yukosjärvi, located 200 kilometers south of the North Pole, is the Ice Hotel, featuring not only walls, but also chandeliers and cups all made of ice. The Ice Hotel is the world's only hotel that must be rebuilt every year. Some 40 ice sculptors come every year to work on the hotel, which uses roughly 36,000 tons of ice and snow procured from mountains and rivers. Despite being the world's coldest hotel, it brings in roughly 50,000 tourists annually. Spending a night there may leave plenty of interesting memories. On that note, let's turn to our first story today. Koreans who are active in specialized fields all over the world recently gathered in Seoul to take part in the 19th Future Leaders Conference. During the conference, they shared their thoughts on their identity and discussed ways to create and expand a Korean network within and outside of Korea. Let's find out more. <laughs> Following the anti-Korean racist riots in Japan in 2014, the United Nations Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination urged the Japanese government to regulate hate speech by law. Japan-based Korean lawyer Kim Chang-ho played a hidden but integral role in bringing about this decision. Kim is a lawyer who focuses on the rights of ethnic minorities such as Japanese of Korean descent. Kim recently visited Korea to take part in the 19th Future Leaders Conference. 일본 국내에서는 아무래도 제일 교포가 선거권도 없고 예 일본 제일 교포가 일본 국내에서 뭔가 말해봤자 그렇게 영향력을 가질 수 어려우니까 그런 거에 대해서 특히 해외에 있는 뭐 제일 제일 교포나 제일 동포 아뭐 제외 동포의 정보 발신이나 그런 걸할수 있으면 좋겠다라고 생각을 해서 참, 참가를 했습니다. Some 90 Koreans active in numerous fields like finance, media, and arts and culture took part in the meeting. Esteemed Danish fine art painter and Korean adoptee Jun Jin Engelhart was also present. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, broaden my network, uh, meeting a lot of other overseas Koreans, uh, and maybe we can help each other in different ways. Uh. Participants shared information and discussed ways to expand the network of Koreans around the world. They also discussed stories that only second generation Koreans born abroad would understand. How your parents influence or contributed to your identity crisis or struggles. 부모님들은 느꼈던 그 감정이랑 제가 느꼈던 그 한국 공부를 해서 느꼈던 감정이 좀 달랐었거든요. 한국 사람으로서 살아가자 진짜 그것만 약속하자 계속 그런 말을 많이 듣고 좀 자랐던. The theme of this year's meeting was Lights of Korean, Light the World. There are hopes that the participants will embrace their Korean identity and act as a bridge between Korean societies and their local societies. For five days, the participants toured Korea, visiting Seoul, Gwangju, and Jeonju, and experienced Korean history and culture. Moving on to our next story. This year marks 26 years of German reunification, and Dresden, which used to be part of East Germany, was the site for celebration. This year, a Korean pavilion was established in the city to hope for the reunification of Korea, the world's only divided nation. Let's take a closer look. 
the German city of Dresden is in a festive mood. Despite the rain, residents are on the street celebrating German reunification. This year, the Korea Pavilion was established. Residents left their wishes for Korean reunification on colorful pieces of paper. Ich habe mir gewünscht, dass auch in Korea irgendwann einmal eine friedliche Vereinigung stattfindet und vor allem, dass die Menschen, die durch die Teilung getrennt sind, sich später in die Arme schließen können. Dresden was torn by heavy bombing during World War II, but became the brightest star of the reunified Germany and the very symbol of peace. The establishment of the Korea Pavilion was to let all people wish together for the reunification of the world's only divided nation. Hanbando is also the Tongire, Ujire, Tashian Bun Tejeginon, Tunghan Kegra Usanga Hamida. Iran Hanbando is Tongire Tesuitro, Ukani, Harupali, Tiekwai Kilo, Trosogo, Rigo Kukjezai, Jongsan Tugin, Iron Ro, Sung Tiona Hagir, Aragasim. German government officials who visited the Korea Pavilion considered the issue of Korean reunification as an agenda for the whole world. Wünsche ich Ihnen allen, dass ja, dass Sie trotzdem an diesem Wunsch und an diesem Glauben zu Vereinigung und zu Frieden auf der koreanischen Halbinsel zu kommen festhalten. Ich weiß, dass das schwer ist, aber man muss an seine Träume glauben, damit man sie verwirklichen kann. The wall is filled with wishes. All wishing for the day when Koreans would be able to celebrate the reunification of their country. Our next story takes us to Italy. The slow food movement promotes the use of homegrown ingredients and traditional cooking methods. Every year, a global festival on slow food takes place in Italy, the birthplace of slow food. And this year, visitors and exhibitors had the opportunity to think about health, society, and the global environment. Let's find out more. From bright gold to dark brown, honey from around the world has been arranged into a pyramid. People sample different types of honey and talk about honeybees, which are disappearing from Earth. Their hands reach for these edible nuts. Here, they can try out products from different parts of the world. This is the Terra Madre Salone del Gusto 2016, held in Turin, Italy. Another product which is really unique is the nuts from the sandalwood uh, bush, uh, which is used, like the leaves of the sandalwood bush are used main, mainly as um, um, essence or cosmetics or in perfumes. This year, the entire city was the venue for the festival. Some one million visitors took part, all united by the desire for proper eating. Good is like what without using chemicals we grow our vegetables. So it's it's a very good platform that uh, slow food is creating for us as an indigenous people. The theme for this year is loving the earth. Visitors enjoy specialties from some 100 countries. Looking at these traditionally made foods, they are prompted to think deeply about healthy eating. People uh, to get to know about the real food, about uh, food with uh, uh, produced from small-scale farmers, uh, with uh, an identity, with strong connection with the territory and with the different countries, and the diversity of food that is coming from all over the world. One important agenda of the slow food movement is how to connect with the next generation. It aims to protect local dishes and dining culture while conveying the message of healthy eating to the next generation. We cannot destroy, destroy the soil with uh, productions and with food that is not sustainable. So in thinking to our future, in thinking to the future to our, of our genera the next generations, to things to our kids and children, we have to care about what we eat, we have to care about the environment, we have to care about the future. 
Its message is simple. Stay healthy through the food you eat and preserve local traditions. The slow food movement aims to go beyond gastronomical pleasures and preserve our environment. Our next story takes us to China. As time passes, nuclear families are becoming more of a norm than an exception, leading to the phasing out of filial duties. Korean expatriates in China hold an annual festival for elderly expatriates, and this festival is helping raise awareness of respect for the elders and Korean traditions. Let's take a closer look. Dressed up in elegant hanbo, grandmothers perform the tangguchum or the drum dance. As the song goes, they are 18 all over again. The wizened grandfather is showcasing his taekwondo skills. His moves are slow but controlled, and the audience showers him with applause. <laughs> Five years ago, the Korean people's elderly feast first took place with 35 elderly Korean expats. This year, more than 500 senior Koreans took part, enjoying a talent show and traditional games. The festival is now the largest Korean-Chinese festival in all of China, bringing in people of all generations. The festival is also reviving the notion of hyo, or filial duty, in an era when nuclear families are the norm. It was the elderly who made the way for their children in a foreign land. With the elder support, the younger generations will become proud leaders of their society. It's time for our last story of the day. Bodybuilding is an activity for controlling and developing one's musculature. Aspiring Asian bodybuilders face the physical handicap of having comparatively smaller frames compared to Westerners. However, two Korean bodybuilders have surprised the world of competitive bodybuilding. Let's meet them right now. This is the NPC Brooklyn Grand Prix bodybuilding competition featuring chiseled figures from the eastern United States. It's an amateur competition, but it's the gateway to the professional world of bodybuilding. Out of the roughly 200 contestants, two Asians stand out. They are Korean bodybuilders Pang Yu Tae and Pang Won Ho. Pang poses to K pop playing on stage. He won first place in the over 35 category. Competitor number 62. Yeah! As for Pang, he was awarded second place in the physique category. It focuses more on muscularity and proper shape than on muscle size or mass. <laughs> Pang left for the United Kingdom in 2007 with dreams of competing in global events and moved to the United States two years ago to further his dreams. During the day, he went to school and the gym, and at night, he worked part-time. Pang came to the U.S. five years ago and saw potential in working out, something he first began as a hobby. 
Both dream of participating in world championships organized by the International Federation of Bodybuilders. 제가 대회를 쭉 출전함으로써 IFBB 프로 선수가 되는 거고 그 자격을 통해서 한국과 미국을 있는 그 커넥션이 돼 있는 그 아카데미를 설립해서 They say that if you have a dream, take a step, however small they may be. 지금 시작하면서 조금 조금 가는 게 중요하지. 절대 그걸 멈춰서 기회만 올 때까지 기다리고 이런 거는 아무 도움 안 되는 것 같아요. His goals are being reached. His goals are being accomplished. And me, myself, as an as an immigrant, also I feel motivated by why what he do. With their undaunted spirit, Pang Won Ho and Huang Yu Te are sending a message of hope that nothing is impossible. I hope you enjoyed today's stories on Going Global. A park in the U.S. state of New Hampshire was recently decorated with numerous scarves and mittens. Volunteers hung up more than 400 handmade scarves and trees at Veterans Memorial Park in Manchester to help those who do not have winter supplies to stay warm. It is the second time that knitted goods have been left for those in need following a sim similar initiative last year by a local church. What a heartwarming way to fend off the cold. I hope this event shares the warmth of love across the whole world. Now going global, we'll be back next week with more exciting and interesting stories from all around the world. Thank you for watching.